Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone. So let me ask you something. Have you ever wondered that is there a way in Power BI where I could store a particular value which can be later on used in any calculation or any other operation that you would want to do within Power BI? If you are searching for that answer, then look no further because Today we're gonna to cover that same topic and that functionality in Power BI is called parameters. Now for today, we're gonna to see three most common usages of parameters, but don't get me wrong, the usage of parameters is not limited to just these three. We're gonna cover more advanced usages of parameters in future videos, but I want to cover these three first so that you get a good head start into using parameters in your daily Power BI requirements. So without wasting any further time, let's quickly jump into it. Now the data that we're using today is an IMDB rating database and you will find the links in the description where you can download the same and follow along if you want. Now as per the definition given by Microsoft on parameters, parameters serves as a way to easily store and manage a value that can be reused. Now parameters give you a flexibility to dynamically change the output of your queries depending on their value and can be used for changing the argument value for particular transformation and data source functions or input in custom functions. Okay. So we're going to see how we can do that. The first usage common usage that we're going to see is inside this reporting view. And within this reporting view, we're going to create a certain visualization and use parameters within that. Okay. So first of all, let's see how we can create a parameter. So for to create a parameter, all you have to do is go to the modeling tab and there you will see a drop down which says new parameter and then within that you will see two options numeric range or fields okay i'm going to select numeric range here now when you select the numeric range you will see a prompt like this first one says numeric range and again you can change it to fields if you want from here we'll look into that later on but right now we'll see a numeric range and the parameter name uh, let me name it as rating okay and it's going to be an decimal value. The minimum value that I want is zero. I want an increment value of 0.1 and a maximum value of 10. Okay. And the default value should be zero. Now by default, uh, this checkbox will be checked, which says add slicer to this page, because this is how the user will be interacting with your parameter. So I'm going to keep that as checked and then press on create. So as you see, it has created a slicer for me. And when I drag this slicer, it will increment that slicer by 0.1 up until 10, because that was my maximum value. But as of now, this slicer does not have any functionality. So we need to connect that with a visual. So for that to happen, let's drag a couple of column into my visualization to drag. I can just simply click on, let's say I'm going to use this title column, which has the movie names in it. Okay. And I'm going to use this inline block column, which has the movie ratings. Now, the moment we create a parameter, Power BI automatically creates a table for you. So if you see, it has named my table as rating because that was my parameter name. And then within that, you automatically have two fields. First one is rating, which is simply generating a series. You can see the DAX that it has written which says generate series zero uh, up until 10 and increment of 0 0.1. And then a second DAX, which says selected value rating. So basically what's happening is whatever value that is selected by the user here, the value that you see here, 3.40, it gets stored in this rating value measure. Coming back to my visual, I want the user to have the ability to filter the data set that you see in this visualization using the parameter that I have created. Okay. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new measure and within this measure, I'm going to write filter and the table that I'm using is this one only 2022 movies and the filter expression being inline block, which is the column for movie ratings is less than or equal to the rating value 
parameter that we have and then I'm going to close this. Now filter as its own does not give you anything because it's it's a table DAX as we have seen earlier. Now we have to encapsulate this inside an iterative function to get our value. So because my data set contains more than one value for a single movie, I would not use sum x here. I'm going to use max x so that I can guess the maximum rating that a movie got in my database. Okay. And the table is this and the filter expression is nothing but my inline block. Now I'm going to use this measure inside this visual. Okay. So I'm going to just drag it here. So the moment I interact with my parameters here, it's filtering out my data based on the condition that I've given in this measure, which says if my inline block is less than equal to rating, then give me that inline block value in this measure. Okay. So that's why it's getting filtered out as per the parameter change. Now moving on to second usage. Parameters can be used to create dynamic calculations within your measure. Now let me show you what I mean. So within this data set, I have a column called reviews, which contains the annual number of reviews a particular movie received. Now I want the user to have the flexibility or the ability to see how many reviews a movie received in a given number of months. Okay. And we'll see how that can be done using a parameter. So I'm going to go back to my reporting view. And within this, I'm going to insert a new parameter here. And again, it will be a numeric range number of months. It's going to be a whole number and minimum should be one. Maximum should be 12 because of 12 months. Increment would be one and the default value should be one month. Okay. I'm going to create this. Now by default, as we saw earlier, this does not serve any purpose as of now, we're going to connect this with this table. So for that, we're going to create a new measure and in this measure, and I'm going to write filter table will be to the movies filter expression would be now this time again, inline block is less than or equal to rating value. Okay. This remains the same as the previous measure. I'm going to encapsulate this inside a sum X this time. Okay. Expression would be reviews divided by 12 because I want to first convert it into a monthly review. And then I will multiply it by the new parameter value that I have. So number of months value. Okay. I'm going to close this and press enter. Let's add this into this view. And just for reference purpose, I'm going to add the review column as well here. Now let's try changing the calculation based on this. When the number of months is 12, it should ideally be the same, which is correct here. 11 and 11, 18 and 18. But if I convert it to two months, let's say it's changing accordingly. Perfect. Now moving on to the third usage. Now this is where we can use parameters inside our transformation step. Let's go to the transformation tab by clicking on transform data. Now within this transformation step, what we want to do is we want to create a list of values, which can filter out our data set before even going to our visual panel. So this way we can ensure that the query that we are running is already filtered out before coming to the reporting view. Okay. So in order to do that, we need to first create a parameter. I'm going to click on manage parameter and click on new parameter. I'm going to give it a name. The type of data that we're going to supply here is a text and I'm going to write PG 13 and press OK. So this has created a parameter for me and the value has been assigned as PG 13. Now I'm going to use this value to filter out my data here from the certificate section. I'm going to select this, click on text filters and equals to, and within this new prompt, instead of ABC here, just click on the drop down and select par parameter and automatically the, uh, the parameter that we created would be selected and you can just press OK and it will automatically filter out your data set. Now let's see another example. I'm going to remove this filter from here. Again, I'm going to create a new parameter and this will be called as ranking parameter. This time we'll keep it as any. Okay. And I'm going to say list of values and I'm going to enter a few items here and the default value is one current value is also one and press okay. So it has created a 
ranking parameter here and the current value is one. I can choose to select the drop down from here and select anything else. But as of now, let's apply this into this ranking column and filter out the data. So I'm going to create number filter equal and in the new prompt, I'm going to select parameter and it has automatically selected ranking parameter and press OK. OK, and I can choose to select any other value from the parameter and it will be filtered out from here as well. As you see, let me select rank number five and it has filtered automatically. Now the final method is to create a parameter using query. Okay, so for that, I'm going to create a duplicate of this, remove all other columns and I'm going to select only a couple of them. Okay. And once you have done your transformation, convert this into a list. Now for this video, I use the same 2022 movies table, but you can do this by some external file as well, or connect it to a separate database to get a certain list of items that you want to filter out. Okay. So possibilities are endless just to save time. I've just used this table, but you can do anything here. And once you import, you can, you just have to convert that to a list using this transform step here. Okay. Convert to list, select the column and convert to list. Once you've converted to list, now go back to the main table where you want to apply the filter and click on the title section, text filter equals and open this drop down. Now, instead of a parameter, click on new parameter. Now here, give it a name type would be a text and suggested value would be a query this time. And since you've already created a list here, that list will show up here. Now enter a current value. I'm going to enter whatever value was there inside my list and press OK. Now click on close and apply. Since we have given it a current value as one up, that's why it's filtered the data on one up. Uh, I can go to transform data and click on edit parameters. And in this section, I can choose any value that I want from that original list that we had, which we created as a list. So let's select this 18 pages and press OK and apply changes. So once we do that, it will apply that filter on the transform step and then give us the result in the reporting view. So that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. And as I said in the beginning, this is not the end of the usages of parameters. There are multiple usages and we will see them slowly and gradually in future videos. So stay tuned for that. And if you're liking my content, then please do remember to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much.